Greetings there, fellow students, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Mind Over Magic. Episode 4, Bedrooms and a Dormitory. The priority that you guys just gave me, oh, and let me unlock the Odakim, is to focus on bedrooms and uh, dorms. So for that, we're going to need the research over here. Rustic furnishings to unlock the ability to make regular beds, not just cots. And one of the things to also notice is the fully trained student group. Cassie and Dakota don't belong to uh, because they aren't fully trained. So they automatically are put on the normal student schedule. Not the fully trained student schedule. So that's completely automatic. Wolfkin are fine sleeping on the floor, but they um, they don't recover as quickly as... Um, well, this, it will be more relevant when I'm in a bed. But you need less sleep the higher quality of the bed that you're in. Now, there's two types of scrolls. Uh, there used to be three, just like a few days ago. But there's two types of scrolls. There's adept scrolls, uh, which you get from regular students. And then savant scrolls, which you get from um, graduating or retiring your staff members. And it is also dependent on the tier of the wand that they have. So most of the time you want a lot more adept scrolls than you want savant scrolls, as adept scrolls allows you to do the higher staff but you will need some savant scrolls as well. So we'll get into that. But um, for now, we're just looking for potential um, uh, potential faculty that have uh, that have scrolls that we, we want. So. Talking about bedrooms. Let me collapse all this so it's less busy. We are aiming for uh, bedrooms for our faculty, which is plus five conviction when they sleep in it. And then dormitories for our students. The higher level stuff is not realistically obtainable right now. Austere bedrooms are like uh, cheaper. Uh, but but we can get a little bit more conviction out of dorms and bedrooms rather than than Spartan bedrooms. So a dorm is a room that is private with three plain beds and a window. And a bedroom is private with two, one or two beds and a window. And they do have a, the bedroom has a luxury goal of five. So we need plain beds and windows uh, researched for this. And rustic furnishings is both plain beds and windows. So that's what we're going on right now. And they both need to be private. Which is, uh... Which is actually not too hard to do. So, Locke, I'm gonna have you back on construction. So private just means, um... One door in and out. So, for instance, this dining room is not private because it has two doors, but the scullery is private because there's one door. The nurse office is private because there's one door. Here's a weird tip. If it has a door and you move something to block the door, it becomes private. I don't know. Sometimes that's useful. Um, there's a there's a, a, a some advanced building where that can become useful. All right, we have enough wood and gut berries for the next ritual, which is good. So here's the plan. I'm gonna have one bedroom here and one bedroom here. I'll probably put the students to the left.
as you can see there's the wonk wonk just like changes how like goofy it is which can be charming most of these buildings right now are not permanent structures they're um they'll be heavily in flux with uh as things change so there's the classroom again don't forget the door Students are leveling up, and I think I'm going to have these students um, do tasks for the second half of the day, so that we can get more building done. So Kathanon is now researching uh, plane beds and windows, and Locke is helping to construct. No, he's actually assembling an extra cot, which we will use for a third fire student. So let's get that third fire student. we have another cot for. Now the, as you add more students, the ritual to summon more students becomes more time consuming and requires more faculty. So you can have a lot of students, like you could have like 10 students at once, um, but you're just gonna have to manage their food and uh, manage their quarters and training and it becomes more cumbersome at some point. So taking a look at this last one, um, he will get a lot more experience or a lot more health if he sleeps in a austere bedroom. Interesting challenge. Um, speed, HP, and mana if I go two days in a row without being tired. And HP and mana if I destroy three objects. So this student here... Can be very tanky, potentially. Uh, Vivified are some of the highest HP to begin with. So let's keep this one. And let's attempt to fulfill all of his requirements. So I'm going to add that to the priority. And fulfill Ernest's requirements. Which means I'm going to need an austere bedroom for him. Um, which is fine. But as you can see here, I don't actually have the facilities for one at the moment, so that's going to be like a, a new floor. So, no roof there, sorry. Oh, I need more stone. So, Locke, let's have you mine some more stone. Double-clicking highlights all of the resource that's on your screen. And you're right, the stairs didn't go high enough. In fact, the stairs here might not work. Oh, that's weird. I, like, skipped a stair. It depends on where the stairs' exits are, so I might need to adjust the walls. I forgot to do that. Because see, this stair exits left, so this stair will probably exit left as well, which should be okay. Nope, it won't be okay. I'm actually going to build here um, for... One more try. Okay. 
So the raffle is only gonna be done when a student is fully trained. So one of the medallions that Ernest has is that um, he wants to destroy things and that will give him HP and mana. So if I got a priority here and I do destroy no one, Ernest high priority, anything I mark down for Ernest to destroy will get destroyed by him. So I'm gonna mark down, uh, let's see. Some worm weed that is far from the base. And I can select him and just right click on it, queuing it up for him to destroy, fulfilling that medallion requirement. Actually, this worm weed is gonna be outside of the zone, I think in a second. Yeah, it's gone. So he can't get there, but he, he can at least destroy the worm weed here. Also worth noting that um, casting fire, which is a destroy, levels up his magic skill as well. So he's leveling up his magic in doing this. And when he hits fire level two, he'll actually do more destruction damage. But I'm gonna let him sleep. I don't need him miserable. And in the morning, we'll do the Dispel Fog Ritual. These torches are vulnerable to rain. So I am going to build a temporary. Actually, I can keep that roof there. That's fine. There's actually a strategy involved in building roofs like this, which I'll explain once it becomes relevant later. The fog is a bit of a, a resource refresh, but not exactly because the resources that the fog offers are like crystals. It's more just making resources available more than anything else. So, um, Vivified. Let's talk about the Vivified's um, food. So the Vivified's can eat just about anything without penalty. Um, so that means that they can eat raw gut berries. So I'm going to do a new restriction here. Vivified. Status has vivified. Consume. For vivified, they will just eat raw gut berries. Now, I have to keep an eye on my gut berries because I need those for the ritual as well. So for the next ritual, let's quickly cut down a tree and collect some more gut berries. Uh, this... These two torches are going to be vulnerable due to the rain. Um, but if I build these floors, here, let me build from the other side. If I build these floors now, it will protect those torches. Oh, I'm going to do that real quick. And it won't immediately break everything. It, get, it gets damaged over time. So I'm just trying to stop the the storm from damaging anything that is uh, vital. So only four can recreate at an enchantophone at once. So someone has to um, miss out. We also have a fog incarnation coming in. 
So, uh, it is haunting the dining room. Uh, the reason that is important to note is if it was haunting something that gain that prevents access to the mana font, you have to be careful about hunting it because what, it, like, let's say we hunt it and it cuts us off from the mana font. Once we start the fight, we might be unable to regain our mana, which would be a very bad situation to be in. And that would require us to manually, or require me to manually refill mana before it cuts access off. Alright, so damaged it 25%. Um, who to bring to the fight? No one has a medallion that would benefit from fighting at the moment. So it doesn't really matter who we bring. Uh, Dakota and Ernest. Dakota will do more damage than um, Cassie or Ernest because Wolf can have a, a base damage bonus. All right, and then shield, you prepare for the ritual. So we have a lantern keeper, attacks the strongest enemy and applies minus 10 power to the target and plus 10 to a random ally, which will make the belchers more dangerous. Fireball. Has a chance to crit. Ooh, and I got one. So, as you can see, our tank took quite a bit of fire damage there as a result of um, the Belcher getting a inspired damage boost. But the Torchbearer is gone now. So this Belcher is going to be hitting for 52. We have armor for 60. So that's survivable. And fog monsters are dead. Lock, I'm going to have you med rest. And I need two more gut berries for the ritual. Mana crystals are pretty common this iteration, yeah. But I'm going to want to get more than two gut berries because that leaves our vivified without anything to eat. Because they won't eat, they don't want to eat rats. So I'll get some extra gut berries for uh, meal consumption. All right. Repel fog with shield, Cathanon, and let's go with Ernest because Ernest is potentially going to be our um, our next faculty member. Leaving Locke to med rest and then the other two to uh, haul and fetch. High stick. Uh, okay, this changes things. So gut berries uh, grow much faster, but they suck to eat. Mages eating gut berries or gut berry soup suffer an additional uh, conviction penalty. I'm not sure if that applies to the vivified, but uh, I will find out in a second. So I'm going to force Cassie to eat one and see if it pisses her off. You are my guinea pig. Uh, no. It does not matter. Vivify don't care. Cool. Well, that that's fine. Alright, so Fog got pushed back. Dismal Crystal. Smoky Crystal. Definitely gonna stop what I'm doing to get that Smoky Crystal. The Smoky Crystal gives me a large rug. Um, so we have a doll over here as well. And this is a Malice Crystal, so this is a battle crystal that you can fight um, 
for Viscera Stone and a Mana Crystal, but it's a tier two fight, and that's going to be a little bit too hard for my guys. So the crystals that give me um, furniture stuff, rugs and the like, I'm going to beeline for it because I lose access to it very quickly as it um, gets obscured by the fog. So in fact, lock. Oh, this won't be fogged. Never mind. So shield beelined it for this one, which will get covered in fog in like a few hours. But the other one doesn't get covered in fog uh, tonight. Cathanon, I want you to start assembling these torches before uh, nasties come. And rather than waiting for Ernest to go fetch that, I'm going to haul it myself. So now we have a large rug that we can place down. Kind of nice. And with two more Phoenix flowers, I'll be able to make more light sources. So Ernest, you need to destroy one more thing. So destroy that wormweed. And there we go. He has completed his um, stalwart tenacity bronze medallion. So he gains boosted HP and mana. So if I take a look at his health and mana, it's higher as a result. Now he wanted a an austere bedroom. I'm still waiting on lock to get stone. So, uh, priority, lock mines, which will probably happen tomorrow. He did heal up, though. He is no longer wounded, which is good. And we also managed to get that other small rug. Uh, which I can put in the mess hall. So rustic furnishings is done. Rustic furnishings is for regular beds and windows. So now we can start building the bedrooms. So here's the plan. The plan is to put beds for the staff here, students here, and then Ernest up there. I'm also going to want um, to start amassing what I need for the next fog ritual. Ernest just got sleep focuser medallion as well. So he now has uh, boosted speed, HP, and mana. For two days, he wasn't very tired. So I need to have him sleep in an austere bedroom. Um, you know what? Actually, where is his bed? I can start doing that now. All right, Ernest, you're a wannabe fire mage. So there you go. There's an austere bedroom. An austere bedroom is one that is lofted, so taller than it is wide, and that's the only requirement. Which actually means that if I wanted to, I could stick a door here uh, in his bedroom, because his bedroom doesn't have the re requirement of being private, allowing us to interconnect our second floor. And he needs to sleep there for a total of 18 hours. Uh, Locke, are you well rested? What's going on with you? Oh, uh, did I force? No, I didn't force you. 
I think because he was in medical rest, his um, day-night sleep schedule is all out of whack. Will the hospital lose his private status? It uh, isn't required to be private. It's just a nurse office. Uh, dorm rooms. So the dorm room requirements do require privacy. So... The dorm rooms that I'm building for the kids... Actually, I'm gonna have this be the dorm room. This will be a bedroom. There we go. We're, we're working on it. So you're right. If um, that medical room was an infirmary with um, three med beds and two incense burners, it does need to be private, but nurse's office only needs to be lofted. Don't have any gut berries for the students to eat? Yes, you are correct. Of Cathanon and Shield, grab some real quick. Luckily, they recreate uh, first thing in the morning, so now there there is food for them. So one of the advantages of doing a weird roof like this to floor is the modifier of the room above will be elevated, which is one of the keywords. Elevated is no adjacent rooms or foundation below, which a lot of rooms have elevated requirements. So the bedrooms don't require elevation, but bed chambers do. Bed chambers need to be private, skewed, and elevated, which is the best level of bedrooms, and then private quarters need to be private and skewed. So elevated will be a requirement for the best bedrooms. So building your designs preparing for the hardest modifiers that the game requires is important. However, this will never be a bedchamber. Um, but I'm just saying that that's what I'm working towards. So Cassie, you have completed the uh, full learning training when, you're, um, when your stomach's full. Uh, also, uh, Cassie wants to destroy things. So I get more medallions uh, for having my students do their, you know, or I get more uh, adept scrolls, rather, having the students fulfill their medallion requirements. So I'll allow that. And Cathanon, I want you to harvest the wormweed. So the wormweed is needed to make the beds, plus wood. So Locke should be building shield cutting down trees and Cathanon harvesting wormweed. Wormweed takes a while to cut down. So the wormweed over here, I'm going to set up for Cassie to destroy for her own medallion. Medallions for Dakota are not ones I'm uh, going to be working on. Unless I just accidentally get them. So there we go. We've got... Um, Oh, you know what? How about I put the roof on afterwards so that we actually build the walls. But this is going to be our dorm. Three beds. Uh, meaning that I have the room to potentially add a fourth student. And then this will be our staff bedding. Uh, that wall is unreachable. Won't be if I do that.
And then I'm gonna move this rug over here. All right, so Cassie fulfilled her destroying things medallion. And all she has left is to dance. And for the next ritual, I need uh, more wood. And I'm about to lose access to these trees. In fact, I would say these trees aren't worth cutting down because the resources in them are going to go poof. What I do want to do is haul the stone out of there before the stone gets destroyed. So this tree... Uh, shield, I'm going to need you to cut down some trees. The trees available to us for the next uh, fog... Dispel fog ritual is um, all going to be obscured. So I'm racing to cut some extra wood down before I lose access to it. And then pull that wood in so that it doesn't get blocked. There we go. So now I'll have the wood for the next ritual. I do not have gut berries, but the gut berries, I have tons growing uh, easily well within the non soon to be fogged zone. So that's not much of an issue. Hey, HK. Thanks for stopping in, resubbing. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the comments on YouTube. And I'll do, I'll harvest a little bit extra gut berries for the, uh, for the dispel ritual in the morning. Or actually, I think Cathanon's doing it now. Yep. But I'll dispel in the morning so that people can get their sleep. Dakota happened to get the serene sleeper. And then tomorrow what I'll do is I'll break down the old cots and move everyone into their bread bedrooms. But Ernest is getting time logged uh, in the austere bedroom there, fulfilling his austere bedroom uh, medallion. So the reason I'm building it like this is the higher level bedrooms require them to be skewed. So I'm just, in preparation, setting up this weird bedroom for the skewed, uh, the skewed zone. And then we're also going to want a light, which requires phoenix flowers. And <laughs> there's only one not in the fog on this side. Maybe there's some on the, yeah, there's two on the other side. So dorm requires three or more beds and a window. So then the other requirement that I'm going to need once the bedrooms are done is to get the windows up. There might not be space for a window here as the roof is skewed. We'll see. I, th I think it will fit though. So everyone's out of their beds. I am going to blow up the cots, the old cots. I'm also going to put down some more chests because our uh, initial chests are full. And then after lunchtime, during the second half of the day, I'll do the fog ritual. I don't want them to skip class.
So Ernest is maybe two nights sleep away from fulfilling his austere bedroom sleeper. And he'll gain a, a ton of HP as a result. Yeah, this is more skewed than it really needs to be, so I could I could fix it if the if the windows don't fit. So then the windows cost ice petals. So I will push the fog back and then harvest ice petals. Getting the the requirements for the windows. There's also the possibility of getting uh, resources like that. So this stone ruin gives ice petals. So maybe we'll go into a stone ruin and get ice petals that way. Oh, okay. Uh, current priority. And build bedrooms and clear the lantern. So periodically in the dungeons, there will be magic lanterns that get corrupted. And they will give a negative conviction, kind of like a psychic um, ship does in RimWorld, until you clear it. So um, what I'm going to do is do a superior repel fog ritual. And then start working to clear towards that uh, corrupted lantern. I don't want to start fighting before the while the fog is going to kill us next turn. And that will also give... Oh, great. Bane to the Vilified. Uh, Vil Vivified can only cast spells that deal no direct damage in battle. That's a problem because I have um, two Vivified. So I think I'm going to go for another uh, Fire Wand user because I don't want to enter this fight with... Um, one of my two backliners not being able to fight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon a water wand. Um, so we'll have three fire and one water. Bringing a water person in. And hopefully they won't be vivified, because if they are, oof. But we did just push back the fog, so I'm going to um, high priority harvest these ice flowers that are available to us. And then put Cathanon on high priority harvesting. I can expel students that I don't want, but it does have morale penalties. So, yes, but like, don't, don't spam it. All right, so summoning a student. Now that we have three students, the requirement to summon additional students requires two faculty members. And it will require an hour of summoning time. So it takes longer and and, uh, and it requires more staff. You out of mana? No, you're not out of mana. Get back out there. Try to get the ice petals for the windows that we need. So those two windows will make that a bedroom and a dorm. And we got a human. Cool. Uh, medallions. Eat bitter gruel for power and HP. Kill the burrow lava and recharge magic lanterns. Okay. Uh, well, that's not one that I'm likely to keep, but at least I can fight with them. So uh, I'm going to bring Dakota and Floor. This is going to be a bit of a tough fight because these guys are level one. So you know what I'm going to do? I am going to train the students and then fight tomorrow night. I think I think fighting with a bunch of like level ones is going to be harder than it's worth. So I will go and get them a little bit extra XP. So if I expelled students... Um, because I saw you ask about that. Expelling a student permanently, um, 
we'll have the Efficient. So let's say we expel Cassie. Have the um, minus 10 Conviction. So it is possible, but since I'm already minus 10 Conviction from this um, Magic Lantern, that would uh, be a little risky with uh, Mental Breaks. Who's supposed to be teaching right now? Kathanon? Alright, let's... Oh, yeah, the class time is over. So, Kath, let's have you... So, up here, this is for staff. And these beds are for students. And this one is specifically for Ernest. So we're about to get the dorm and bedrooms set up. So in order to become a bedroom, this just needs one window. In order to become a dorm, this just needs one window. And windows um, will... Windows are a valid light source, meaning that you don't need as many braziers if you have windows. And windows will also allow you to grow plants indoors, as windows will allow the sunlight to come through. So you can have a greenhouse if you want. All right, I'm going to want to store these ice petals outside of where the fog is about to infect. Uh, what about over here? Okay, we're safe over here. So there's our dorm. And we'll make it red because, you know, red shirts. And there's our bedroom. We'll make this purple. And we can do a repel. So we did get the bedrooms. Um, train these students for combat against the lantern. Yeah, the game allows you to do some pretty strange and interesting builds. For sure. I'm also out of wood for the next uh, ritual. We have nine wood left, so I'll have uh, shield cut down some trees. Thank you for tuning in to Mind Over Magic, which originally streamed live on Twitch March 19th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you in next episode or upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow mages. <laughs>